Chapter 1. Patient Measurement Measure the patient's uninjured leg. Two measurements are required for correct selection. Firstly, measure from the groin to the base of the heel and add on 25 to 30 centimetres to allow the foot to plantar flex and to provide enough room for the traction. Secondly, take a high oblique thigh circumference to obtain the correct size of thigh hoop. Chapter 2 Thomas Splint Selection When ordering a Thomas Splint system, a splint, a thigh hoop and a skin traction kit are required. The splints are universal and therefore each splint fits both the left and the right leg. The Thomas Splint is available in two lengths, adult and paediatric, and there are six thigh hoops of varying sizes, which are all universal left and right. The skin traction kits are available in either non-adhesive or adhesive, paediatric and adult. Each kit comprises of one skin traction kit, eight slings, one metre gamgee strip, 30 centimetres gamgee knee pad, two crepe bandages, one roll of zinc oxide tape, six metres of traction cord, and one windlass. Refer to the sizing chart for ordering. Starter packs are also available. Chapter 3 Assembly of the Thomas Splint Length increments are clearly marked on the side of the Thomas Splint. Select the correct size of thigh hoop and insert the metal rods into the frame of the splint. The thigh hoop can then be adjusted for the left or right side ensuring an audible click is heard to ensure the hoop is securely in position. The Thomas splint is telescopic and can be easily adjusted by depressing the buttons on the splint and sliding to the desired length. The metal traction loops situated on the proximal and distal ends of the splint should always be on the superior surface of the brace. Chapter 4 Dressing the splint Using the fabric slings from the skin traction kit, the splint can now be dressed. Start with the large slings at the proximal end of the splint. Wrap the sling around the frame at the same level as the thigh hoop. A hammock shape has to be achieved to ensure patient comfort. Continue down the splint, butting each sling together to minimise wrinkles. Continue down the splint using the large and medium slings until the splint is covered to the patient's ankle. The slings can be secured in place with the Velcro tabs provided to prevent migration of the slings. From the skin traction kit, select the two packs of gamgee. The long strip of gamgee can now be cut to size and doubled over to line the splint. The smaller piece is placed behind the knee to encourage a slight degree of flexion and to provide comfort to the patient. Chapter 5. Applying the non-adhesive skin traction kit. Two or three people are required for this stage. The leg must be held in the correct position throughout this process. Before applying the skin traction kit, a layer of undercast padding should be applied to the ankle to protect the malleoli and Achilles tendon. The skin traction kit should be placed so that the padding covers the malleoli and that there is enough room for the ankle to plantar flex. Begin wrapping the crepe bandage using a figure of eight technique, up to the knee, leaving the knee free for skin inspection. 
and then continue up to the top of the thigh. It is the preference of the clinician as to whether the skin traction kit extends beyond the knee. If more than one bandage is used, ensure adequate overlap and once the wrapping is complete, secure in place. Chapter 6 Applying the Adhesive Skin Traction Kit Two or three people are required for this stage. Trim the adhesive strips to length just below the knee. The leg must be held in the correct position throughout this process. Before applying the Skin Traction Kit, a layer of undercast padding should be applied to the ankle to protect the malleoli and Achilles tendon. Position the skin traction kit in place so that the padding is either side of the malleoli, remove the backing from the adhesive strips and apply slowly to the leg, one side at a time. Small cuts may be made to ensure the strip conforms to the limb and to avoid any wrinkles. Begin wrapping the crepe bandage using a figure of eight technique, up to the knee, leaving the knee free for skin inspection, and then continue up to the top of the thigh. It is the preference of the clinician as to whether the skin traction kit extends beyond the knee. If more than one bandage is used, ensure adequate overlap, and once the wrapping is complete, secure in place. Chapter 7 Applying the Thomas Splint The splint is now ready to be applied. With one person elevating the patient's limb, slide in the dressed Thomas Splint from the side. Position high up in the perineum to ensure the patient's ischial tuberosity is resting on the thigh hoop. Ensure the Gamgee padding is situated underneath the knee to encourage slight flexion. Place the limb inside the splint and attach the thigh buckle. This is easily adjusted to accommodate swelling. Use the strap cover provided for patient comfort. Check the splint to ensure all of the frame is covered and there is sufficient padding. Ensure the heel is free for skin inspection and for plantar flexion. The skin traction kit can now be tied off. Apply the cord on the lateral side of the leg first over, then under the frame. Then apply the cord on the medial side of the leg, this time under first, then over the frame. Then tie off the cord at the end of the frame to create a diamond shape. The cords can now be tied off and cut. Secure the ends of the cord with tape. Extra Gamgee padding may be used for alignment of the fracture. Any excess Gamgee can be applied to the thigh before wrapping the patient into the splint. First wrap the thigh and then the tibial section. A windlass can now be applied through the traction cords and turned if further traction is required. This is fixed traction, as the limb is held between two points, the ischial tuberosity and the bottom of the splint. A water bag is attached to the end of the splint through a pulley to provide relief of pressure in the groin area. 